Jadi bisa dikatakan ya akhir-akhir ini itu Malaysia menjadi pusat perhatian dunia Karena kenapa? Karena negaranya yang terbuka dan juga keramahan daripada negaranya untuk investor-investor Seperti itu guys ya Wow keren sih guys ya Gila Jadi kapan ya kita bisa seperti itu ya kan? Malaysia okay. for me is lifestyle I would argue oh, I get... Jadi dikatakan Malaysia bagi saya adalah gaya hidup ya Berpendapat dan saya mendapatkan 85 to 90% dari apa yang saya dapatkan di Singapura Wow itu itu alasannya gitu ya guys ya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jumpa lagi dengan saya guys Cak Mujib. Gimana kabar teman-teman semua? Semoga sehat selalu dalam lindungan Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Dijauhkan dari segala mara bahaya, malapetaka, bencana dan balak serta berbagai macam penyakit. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Alright guys, kita doakan semoga orang tua teman-teman semua ya kan orang tua kita semua ini diberikan kesehatan selalu dan juga diampunkan dosa-dosanya oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Buat teman-teman semua yang mau masuk surga silakan like dulu. Ya. Yeah. Biasa kayak gitu ya guys Sekarang ha, Yang mau uh, rezekinya lancar Silahkan di subscribe dulu ya guys ya Selamat datang di channel ini Dan buat teman-teman semua Kali ini kita akan reaksi sebuah video Yang mana video ini sangat menarik sekali Untuk kita simak ya guys ya Berkenaan dengan multimilioner Yang memilih Malaysia Daripada US Daripada negara-negara lain juga Wow kenapa begitu ya guys ya Nah tanpa berlama-lama langsung saja guys kita play videonya Let's go I think Malaysia is, is kind of the longest place that I've lived overseas um, I have a small house which I use for when my team comes into town And I have a, a, a kind of a proper family you know condominium that I live in Yeah and uh, I'm a big believer in it I think I think Malaysia 10 years from now could be a growth investment Right now it's it's flat at best oh. But I believe in owning real estate. I think it's great asset diversification. Uh, you're moving your assets into different jurisdictions. And I appreciate that more and more as I become more and more successful in business. And I see some of the craziness that successful people deal with. I think, you know, having stuff in different places is good. Uh, exposing yourself to different markets is good. And Malaysia, I mean, you're in Singapore. For me, if I can live anywhere in the world, obviously Singapore has a bit more development. I don't think Malaysia is that bad, especially in the places that I go. But it is, I mean, one fifth the price of even some of the, you know, the cheaper European cities per square meter, and much, much, much cheaper than Singapore with none of the, yeah. the taxes on real estate. That's why yeah. I did it. I have a lot of friends in in Malaysia and in Thailand and Bangkok, and we compare the prices. Okay, the Singapore is unbeatable, so the price for real estate just insane. But then even if you compare KL, Kuala Lumpur, and Bangkok. Like the price difference is two times. If you buy in Kuala Lumpur, okay, I'm more of a city center guy. I know there's certain expat hubs, Bangsar, Monkiara, people live further out, what have you. You know, I, I, what did I pay? $1,300 a meter for a property that's like ready to go and I just touch it up. Renovations are pretty affordable. A lot of stuff is produced either locally or, or regionally. You can't compare that. I mean, I, th I had a friend in, in Bangkok, he just sold a property for $5,000 a meter. Now, oh. his property was smaller than mine. I think that there's probably... A... Jadi, jadi bedanya itu jauh banget dari 1300 Kalau di Bangkok tuh bisa sampai ke $5,000 dolar, guys. Ya. Wow, gila. A bit of an oversupply or a less... Berarti bisa dikatakan kalau di Malaysia itu lebih efisien gitu untuk uh, apa namanya invest di properti juga, beli kan beli properti gitu kan. Less of an interest maybe more so in these larger, you know, three to four thousand, five thousand square foot properties in Malaysia where you can get them very yeah. affordably. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have the intention of selling properties, generally speaking. If I'm looking to buy long term, you can pay oh, fairly low yeah. prices in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> and for someone who's adjusting, yes, they have more Michelin star restaurants and that kind of oh. stuff in Thailand. But I think the culture is an easier adjustment in Malaysia. And I think oh. the people are some of the nicest in Malaysia. Can you own a property in Malaysia as a foreigner? You can own property. I mean, you can own property in most Asian countries. You can own condominiums. A uh, Malaysia is one of, I think, four countries in Asia where you can actually own the land. And so uh -huh. I have a friend who is American 
who is building a villa. And you got a couple of friends together, they each bought land, they're building villas, they're gonna pull their resources and hire a couple security guards to, to guard their five villas. Yeah, you can actually own land, Malaysia and Japan, and I think parts of South Korea. That's pretty rare in Asia that a foreigner can own land, but you can in Malaysia. I just bought a property, the condo in Phuket, and it's yeah. basically, it's, it's either leasehold or freehold, so it's a bit tricky. So you can own it like properly, but it's more complicated than, than, than Malaysia. In Thailand, they were they were going to have a law where if it's like 1.3 million okay. US roughly, if you were to invest that much, then they would let you on land and they were trying to open it up. But I think they, they pulled back on some of that stuff. So I'm not anti-Thailand. I mean, I have a lot of great friends in Thailand. I mean, stock market's gotten beaten up. I'm, I'm kind of interested in the stock market recently but in, in Thailand. But I just think for a lifestyle. Now, people want to wrap everything into one wrapper. Malaysia okay. for me is lifestyle. I would argue oh, I get Oh, jadi dikatakan Malaysia bagi saya adalah gaya hidup, ya. Berpendapat dan saya mendapatkan 85-90% of what I would get. Hingga 90% dari apa yang saya dapatkan di Singapura. Wow, itu itu alasannya gitu ya, guys ya. Singapore based on how you actually live. You don't go to a Michelin star restaurant every day. So you don't get to count like ah. you know all the extra Michelin star restaurants is worth that much more. You know, for the way that I live. I want to have a club. I want to have a place to go and sit. I want to be able to go to a nice, you know, hotel bar, that kind of thing. I want to be able to go to a nice coffee shop and have a nice mall and just have well, whatever. I think I get 85 to 90% of what I would get in Malaysia or in Singapore, in Malaysia. I am not looking at my property in Malaysia. It's some amazing growth prospect. Uh, I have properties that have gone up quite a bit in value. My Malaysian properties are not those, but I like the place and I'm willing to take some cash off the table to fund a lifestyle that are very much like because I happen wow. to think when you feel good in life you're much more productive in your business and all your other pursuits it's worth taking a little bit of cash off the table especially at the low prices in Malaysia to not have to have it be a big return I own a couple of uh, REITs real estate investment trusts in Malaysia for fun just you know uh -huh. okay I've always liked the Petronas Towers since I was 13 years old all right I'll own the REIT that owns the Petronas Towers we have our event Nomad Capitalist Live at the Majestic Hotel that's owned by a REIT Well, let me buy that REIT just for kind of sentimental reasons. I like the hotel. I'm not, you know, I mean, it pays good yields, tax-free yield. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not investing in Malaysia on a big level. I would keep a lot of my money in Singapore. Just talk to my banker, as I said, in Singapore today. Uh, that's where I would keep a lot more assets. And then I would be investing more exotically in places like Cambodia. Uh -huh. So, Cambodia, uh, and I think okay. Nepal is coming up. Bangladesh might be the next one. You know, when people here move to Malaysia, they, they probably think, move everything. Oh, do you trust the banks? I actually do trust the banks, but it's not the best banking for like a global citizen, for a nomad capitalist. You want everything to fit its piece. So you're advocating often for Malaysia. What do you think other countries don't get about Malaysia? Let's say America. What they what's the misconception about about Malaysia? I guess it's a Muslim country. Um, that's the one that's thrown oh, out okay. there. I mean, so I spend I don't spend a lot of time in Turkey, but I have a home in Turkey because it's a it's a layover point for me. And I bought when things were incredibly cheap. You know, you walk around my neighborhood in Istanbul, it's incredibly international. It doesn't look like a Muslim country. Uh, I'm sure if you go to whatever Turkey's Alabama is, it seems more like Alabama would. It seems more isolated. And so I'm sure the same thing is true about Malaysia. We had our event last year and we have wow. various people who are coming. We had, you know, we, we do have a number of, of gay clients and they asked us, what should they expect? I said, you should expect nothing because they don't care. And if you ask every, Mal and some of them did, they're like, oh yeah, okay. We asked and they said, for us as Malay Muslims, we have an agreement You know, like we have a belief in what we should do for God. You have your own God. That's your business. It's none of our business. We're not going to bother you. And so even other Malaysians, you know, people drink, people dress more provocatively, you know, from the Chinese, the Indian Malaysian, um, the expats, nobody cares. It is not, uh, listen, I mean, I, we had uh, Zubi at last year's event. Zubi grew up in Saudi Arabia before some of the reforms. Okay. He said, even Saudi Arabia is not the Saudi Arabia you think. But Malaysia is nowhere near that. It's just an incredibly open, warm place. People leave you alone. They don't bother you. Oh, I think that's that. a good thing. And I'll tell you what, when I met my wife, she came and she said, you know, coming from Russia, she says, oh my, oh, I remember. Jadi, jadi dia langsung menilai gitu kan di Malaysia itu adalah tempatnya yang orangnya sangat hangat gitu kan. Terus juga, uh, apa namanya, kamu tidak akan uh, ditinggal sendiri. Mereka peduli kepada kamu gitu loh. Maksudnya. Enggak, enggak terus dicuat banget tuh enggak gitu guys tapi penuh dengan kehangatan gitu wow. cleaning when i got my residence permit like that woman was a little grouchy she's like 
that's a back massage in, in Moscow. If that's the worst service they have here, and she's right, they weren't like rude. It was just a little grouchy. Kindness was the thing. She's like, I've never seen such kind people. Optimize for kindness in your life. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why a place like the US is going the wrong direction. People have stopped optimizing for kindness. That's incredibly wow. important to me. The rest of it, I think, is just people don't know what it is. And people, you know, my identity is as an entrepreneur, I meet people, as I'm sure you do, who come up to me and, and they say I've done various things. Like everything's on an individual level. And that shapes my beliefs. I don't owe the United States anything. I played them plenty of, paid them plenty of taxes in the years that I lived there. Um, more than enough to pay for whatever schooling I got. I'm successful. You're successful because of how we were raised by our families, because of our own personal drive, our own ambition. I think in the same way, that should govern the way that you live in some other country. You know, that's why I'm just, I'm a big fan of it. I love Malaysia. I go to PL pretty oh. often. The only thing I don't like is the airport. So I love to come to oh, Changi, yeah. super, uh, super official. Kenapa tidak suka dengan bandaranya? Jadi aku suka dari datang, Ci sangat, oke. Okay. Yeah, but KL airport is like as a hub. I would even love to have it as a hub. But it's a little bit painful to to go through the airport. I don't know, maybe you have different experience. Well. I mean, out of all the airports in all the world, I mean, compared to Europe, I mean, where you land, I landed in Lisbon okay. not that long ago, and they're like, a business class gets off last because that's part of the deal, because like, we have to be a Galantarian. I mean, I, I think any Asian airport will beat most of the rest of the world's airports. I mean, look at some of the airports in the US, even look at, as much as I love Mexico City, look at the airport. That's a real dump. Mexico now, City. it's, you know, the KL airport is further away from the city than okay. Changi. It's not as nice as Changi. It's... It's the Malaysian version of, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's 15 or 20 percent less. The bags do take longer, but I mean, what my goal is to try to bend with have, having, you know, seven homes around the world uh, and having that kind of allocation to real estate in my personal portfolio is, I mean, I, I don't travel with luggage. So for me, that's easy. For me, you know, as a residence permit holder in Malaysia, uh, I'm in and out very quickly. I go through the short queue. So the things that maybe might bother other people, yes, the queues with tourism coming back up, the queues for like economy passengers who are just tourists, they're getting a little bit long. I don't deal with that. I don't carry bags. They're super friendly to me. The last time I was in Singapore, they had this form you've got to fill out. They were super nice about it, but you know, Malaysia doesn't even do that stuff to me now. So I get the Changi. I mean, Changi is in a class of its own. Uh, you know what I don't like about Changi and KL both is security at the gate. Belgrade and Serbia also did that, and they got rid of it when they renovated the airport. KL and, wow. and Changi, I think, are the only ones left where you like have to have the anxiety of going through security right before you board the plane. I think it's a minor thing. It's like uh, overall, it's uh, both like great overall, airports. Uh, Changi is fantastic. Listen, I would argue Changi is better. I think Singapore Airlines, I mean, probably oh. the best airline in the world. I think Singapore very much outweighs the overrated Gulf carriers and their airports. I mean, people say Dubai airport. Dubai airport's worse okay. than KL. It's not a beautiful airport. It's not in, in amazingly functional. I had someone come to visit me recently. They flew on Fly Dubai to go to Emirates. It's a 22 minute rickety bus ride. Singapore is hands yeah. down the best, but I think KL is up there, including among places that everybody says is so amazing, like Dubai. What kind of expats come to, come to live in Kuala Lumpur? Let's say compared to Singapore and compared to Bangkok. Can you explain what type of people come? Well, our business, because we do have this kind of, I think, what I think is the world leading library of research information. We're very multi-jurisdictional and we invest a lot of money in research and understanding every angle of things. I mean, that makes us more expensive. So our clients are making half a million dollars a year and up. Um, Malaysia was kind of off the radar for a couple of years in terms of residence options for them. We don't have as many people of ours moving to Malaysia as there used to be. But I think other people, I mean, there's historically been a lot of retirees. Um, if you look at the MM2H program, it was, and it may still be, the number one residence by investment program in the world. Tens and tens wow. and tens and thousands of people. It may not be number one anymore, but until a couple of years ago it was. Mostly mainland Chinese folks. You were increasingly seeing folks from places like Indonesia, even some Singaporeans. I think Jap Japanese arrivals were up. Um, so you had a lot of people from Asia, from India. You know, Malaysia is a very open country, which is why we have decided to host our event there again, our annual event, because I think like I don't know, very few countries need a visa. So even like Iranians can come and get an MM2H, like just incredibly open. I mean, Somalis okay. can come 
on a tourist visa. I mean, there's very few countries that can't come. To me, that's a cultural thing. Like that show is good stuff. Like somehow they managed to not let those people get jobs as illegal immigrants, the way that the country I was born in can't figure out how to do. And so if you can figure out how to not take away jobs and opportunities from your own citizens, like why wouldn't let you, you let people come from pretty much anywhere in the world and, and bring their money and spend money and contribute to your economy. I just don't understand why you wouldn't. You're seeing, I think, I don't know as much about the Western expats. I guess it's mostly retirees. Uh, I think we've probably encouraged, and maybe people like you have encouraged, some younger people like me who don't need to work in Malaysia. But you're seeing a lot of folks from Asia coming in. Again, it goes back to the point. I mean, that's where the interest for these kinds of programs are. Malaysia's visa policy is extraordinarily friendly. The country is friendly to, okay, hey, come and- oh, Wow, sangat ramah negaranya, ramah untuk datang dan membelanjakan. Spend money. And somehow oh, their government has figured out what my birth country's government hasn't figured out, which is how to prevent people who come there from working illegally to where they don't take away opportunities from their own citizens. And if, so if you can do that, why wouldn't you let almost anyone come? Why would you want to be judgmental like the US or Australia? or Canada, why wouldn't you be more, Singapore is, is right there with them, almost, why wouldn't you do that and just run your own country well and let people come and spend their money and then go? Okay guys, dan itulah tadi ya guys ya, video wawancara, why this multimillionaire chose Malaysia over US. Jadi lebih milih Malaysia daripada US guys ya Dan keterangan-keterangannya sudah kita dengarkan bersama Kalau menonton full videonya silahkan klik uh, link di deskripsi ya guys ya Dan kita sudah menemukan titiknya di situ bahwasanya mereka memilih Malaysia Karena negara yang terbuka, ramah negaranya Hangat orang-orangnya, sopan dan juga istilahnya uh, Apa ya, lebih open ke kepada investor-investor seperti itu Makanya kenapa kok multimilioner ini memilih Malaysia daripada negara-negara lain bahkan daripada Singapura gitu ya kan bahkan daripada negara-negara uh, seperti Bangkok, Hawaii dan lain sebagainya ya guys ya jadi bisa dikatakan ya akhir-akhir ini itu Malaysia menjadi pusat perhatian dunia karena kenapa? karena negaranya yang terbuka dan juga keramahan daripada negaranya untuk investor-investor seperti itu guys ya wow keren sih guys ya gila jadi kapan ya kita bisa seperti itu ya kan? Ha, tadi juga disebutkan dia uh, Malaysia tidak seperti di Indonesia yang mereka yang mana eh, Malaysia lebih terbuka daripada investor-investor seperti itu. Uh, kurang lebihnya seperti itu. Coba teman-teman uh, tonton lagi di situ juga disebutkan ya guys ya. Coba kita tengok komentar-komentar di sini ya guys ya. Oke, okay, saya baca komentar di sini. Tadi kan dikatakan juga bahwasanya uh, bagaimana istilahnya uh, hostnya itu merendahkan airport di Malaysia ya kan? Uh, satu yang saya uh, tertarik ketika host agak merendahkan airport Malaysia dia dengan yakin menjawab itu tidak terjadi masalah karena airport di sini jauh lebih baik daripada airport di Amerika. Nah di situ guys ya poinnya banyak banget di sini daripada uh, bilioner ini ya guys saya menyebutkan bahwasanya iya kalau dibandingkan dengan uh, Emirat tadi kan, nah terus dibandingkan dengan Dubai itu Malaysia lebih efisien katanya lebih seperti itu katanya ya guys ya. Wah, wow, sayangnya di sini ya guys ya banyak bahasa Inggrisnya ya kan. Komentar-komentarnya itu banyak eh, Inggrisnya ya guys ya. Oke okay guys ya, silahkan dibaca sendiri komentar-komentarnya dan saya menemukan bahwasanya penilaian-penilaian daripada orangnya ini atau multimilionernya ini ke tentang Malaysia itu karena yang sudah saya sebutkan tadi bahwa Malaysia itu adalah negara yang terbuka, negara yang ramah, rakyatnya sangat hangat gitu kan. Dan itu juga menjadi pilihan yang tepat untuk dia berinvestasi di Malaysia seperti itu. Oke, okay, kalau teman-teman mau nambahin silahkan tambahin di bawah gimana istilah pendapat teman-teman sekalian bagaimana istilahnya uh, apa namanya pandangan daripada teman-teman sekalian berkenaan dengan podcast kali ini ya guys ya oke itu dulu videonya terima kasih sampai jumpa di video selanjutnya apabila ada salah kata mau dimaafkan jangan lupa guys like share komen dan subscribe nya kepada kawan-kawan teman-teman sekalian sehingga pada tahu tentang informasi ini ya guys ya terima kasih sampai jumpa di video selanjutnya assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh